I'm Barb Fivey and welcome to my Canmore home studio. Has life become just a little serious lately? I think we could all use a little art making right now. So today we're going to make some abstract circles and whether you have had any art experience recently or not, this does not matter. Today's your opportunity to let loose, have some fun, make some joy and make some art. Let's get started. So how's this going to work? Well, to begin, I am going to give you a quick demo on how to use four different types of medium. We're going to look at watercolor, pastel, India ink, and markers. Uh, you can use whatever type of medium you have at home. You may have acrylic paint, you may have oil paint, whatever it is that you want to use. I'll show you a quick sample here of one that I did some time ago. This is acrylic paint on watercolor paint paper. It's 12 by 16 and these squares are 3 by 3 each. As you can see, it's quite random. It's very experimental. No two squares are the same, which is kind of where we're headed with this. Okay, I'm going to do a quick demo for you and show you a little bit about how to create these circles. To start, I'm going to show you what media I have. I've got some markers, a mishmash of Sharpies and highlighters, and there's some Crayolas in here. I've got chalk pastels. You might have oil pastels or Conte. I'm going to use chalk today. I've got India ink. This is waterproof, but you can get a bunch of different types, whatever you happen to have on hand. And I've got watercolors. This is actually a Grumbacher set, uh, just basic, very, very messy watercolors. You may have the tubes, but uh, this is what I've got today. Uh, I have a variety of brushes, very messy brushes, different shapes, sizes uh, that I can use for ink, I can use for watercolor. Um, so I've got those. You can use any kind of brushes actually. And as I mentioned, uh, paper. Very important to have some paper. This is the gridded uh, watercolor paper I've done. It's uh, 12 by 16. Nice to have a stiffer paper because for, if you're working with paint or anything water soluble, you don't get anything soggy or mushy. You can use bond paper. Um, be sure to double that up if you're using markers or triple it because they do tend to go through. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to take a look at watercolor first. I've got my little set of watercolors here and I've got a handy jar of water. show you the markers. So, I've got a whole bunch of markers here. So the next thing is black and white. We are going to get out some ink. I've got this little palette. You can use a little piece of wax paper uh, or whatever, maybe a plastic um, lid to mix up maybe a little bit of ink with water. 
what I'm going to do with this is it's going to be a tonal study and I love tonal studies so I'm just dripping in a little bit of ink into this palette then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a brush and dip it in my water and give it you know just kind of take a little bit of that ink into one of the other little sections add some water to it water it down and then we have sort of two different tones we've got the solid black and one that's a little bit watered down but to start I'm just going to rinse out my brush and I'm going to create what I have in my brush I'm just going to create a light gray oval The other thing you can do with this ink, which is kind of fun, you can do this with the watercolor as well. Just be really careful not to spray the entire house or the entire, all the furniture in the house. But you can get a toothbrush or a stiffer brush like this one, dip it into a little bit of your ink and just give it a little spray. So by just kind of, you know, playing with your finger, you're gonna get messy. But look at that cool texture. Isn't that fun? Don't you just want to do more of that? But then you end up with a black finger. So keep yourself clean. Dip in the water. So I think this one is pretty much done. I haven't gone to the edges with it. So, you know, I can decide. Do I want to go right out to the edge? So next, we're going to look at chalk, chalk pastel. So with this, I'm thinking I'm going to choose a few different colors. I've got kind of a bright yellow, orange, blue, black. You know, just be intuitive. Choose whatever colors you feel good about today. point of this whole process is to allow yourself to stay in the process, experiment, resist planning, just let it happen. Take a look at what you have. Maybe you have something soft, maybe you have something that's a little bit less bright than you like. You can always go back. I might add a little more color to my watercolor, but I think really the most important thing is to just let it flow stay in the process allow yourself to feel the joy play have fun and you know you can just get lost in this and on a beautiful day like this in canmore there is nothing better so i'm going to finish this up so come on back when i'm done and we'll share <laughs>
Well, that was a lot of fun. I have to say, I feel rather invigorated and it was lovely leaving the troubles of the world outside the room while I made circle after circle after circle. And actually I did it pretty fast because I thought the battery on my phone was going to run out. So I was pretty focused. Anyway, here's what I came up with using the four types of medium. And I would love to see what you come up with. So once you have finished your abstract circle experience, feel free to share. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can just share your image using the tag at artsplacecanmore. If you're on Instagram, just use a hashtag artsplacecanmore. Anyway, would love to see what you do. And oh, before I forget, it is a very messy experience and that's what makes it fun. But remember to wash your hands. It's been lovely sharing this with you. Go make some joy, and I'll see you next time. Wait a minute, it just occurred to me. We could see all our circles together in one online gallery. If you wanna join, when you post your image, just add the hashtag Canmore Abstract Circles. So see what kind of crazy circles you can create, and I'll look forward to seeing them there. So I wanted to give you just a little background on these abstract circles. They were first done by a Russian expressionist painter named Vasily Kandinsky. He was a painter who painted in the 1900s to the 1940s. And his work was all about spontaneity. And as you could see from this piece, he was also all about color. He was super interested in color theory, a man of my own heart. His most known work is this one called Squares with Concentric Circles. And interestingly enough, this was just a color study with no end in mind. He did not create this as a painting, but it became the one that he was most known for. So this is what I love about it. He didn't have a goal. He was just playing around with color, trying to do something interesting, playing with colors in order to learn from them for his other paintings. So that's what we're really trying to do here. We're just playing and it's all about the color. It's all about the expression. It is actually just art for art's sake. So pretend you're a scientist in a lab. Experiment, explore, don't plan ahead. Be spontaneous, be messy, and just enjoy playing with abstract circles.